yeah, I, I don't have that part of my brain functioning. Never did. So it's not like I'm, it's atrophying. It just never existed. Which part is that? They remember your stuff. tearing down today? Uh, we are tearing down uh, the tile. I'm a huge fan of this product. I was an original crowd funder for it. i like a chronic key loser, a wallet loser, phone loser. Okay, what's a tile? It's a beacon. It's a Bluetooth beacon. So these little battery powered devices are periodically sending out a Bluetooth signal that can be sensed by your phone. Um, it does three things. It helps you find your tile and you can use the tile to find your phone. And lastly, it has a crowdsourced GPS feature so that other tile tag users in the community can help you find your lost tile. Exactly. Now there's a fourth new function. Wow. It's a brand new thing they're rolling out. It's something they promised in the original Kickstarter campaign, which is if you pair your phone to a tile and you leave without it, you can set this up to let you know you left your keys behind. This is weird. Very rarely do things get bigger and thicker. Right. But the big advantage of the new tile, the fourth generation Pro, is that you can replace the battery. Before, once a year, you just have to buy a new tile. I'm gonna start this teardown with the uh, old tile style. Uh, this is like uh, last year's model. And after that, uh, we're gonna look at the new fourth generation tile. Commence teardown. Commence. Just some component callouts. This is, that's the speaker. This is a piezo element um, that's just like, well, maybe it's glued in from, from the backside. What's amazing is that they're doing just a press fit to create the electrical connection to the board to drive it through that, that connector. The entire Bluetooth circuit is just positioned on the corner here. There's the Bluetooth, the meandering Bluetooth antenna. Um, this is always the sign of a professional when like they decide to reorient the circuit. Like it's not knolled to the edge of the board, but right. like they found like some optimal way to fit that there. Yeah. When you can kind of see they're, they're dancing around the two metal objects here. Um, obviously you cannot position the antenna underneath that. So that's off to the side. And then it's sort of like the West village street, street grid. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's off. Um, and then in the back side, there's nothing except programming pins and test points. So, yeah. So the assembly of this goes really simply. They tape the battery in place. This gets placed into here, uh, which is the bottom side. There's a button facing up. Yeah, it did work, didn't it? <laughs> and then they place their ring on here, and they make a little sandwich with it, and then this gets welded all together. Right. And uh, okay. I guess lastly, let's lift out the PSO. Okay. okay. All right, and so they sealed around the edge nice. to get a really nice loud sound. But also because this is the, um, these are holes to the outside, so they would right. need to seal around that to maintain the waterproofing, water resistance. Part two, we're gonna take apart the new tile. Yay. Same battery. They even went with the same maker. It's a CR2032. So this looks like it's almost identical in terms of assembly. They have a ring, but in this case, it's a stamped piece of aluminum instead of um, this much fancier uh, bent piece of metal. Hmm. It looks like they welded around it. Once again, they're doing their water resistance by putting foam around their ports. Right. Significantly less conservative with the real estate. I guess they must have done some kind of study that said that people don't care about this thing being small because mm. I can think of a dozen ways to make this tighter. Smaller. Great, so now that we've got this part, really similar assembly. It was a sandwich once again. It's welded once again. This housing has uh, a lot more structure to it, a lot more alignment features. Um, it, of course, has uh, a battery door. Mm. Um, it has significantly less tight 
arrangement of components. It seems like the thickness of the product was equivalent to the last one, but it was um, the footprint was larger. It's like a grocery let's, store. Let's talk about some <laughs> obvious comparisons. So first, in the new tile, um, the piezo buzzer is larger, which makes sense because the, the device is louder. Yep, they say twice as loud, so that makes sense. The other thing I noticed is uh, because they have the battery door, they were able to hide the CE marking on the PCB, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool. What that means is that the back side of each, um, if you look at the product when it's closed, it's the new one is a little bit calmer. Like uh, the only marking on there is the machine machine label. code, yeah. whereas they had to include all the information here. The architecture is very similar. You know, they're still doing the same contacts, uh, spring-loaded contacts to make an interface with the speaker. Mm. This is a, a great idea for them because what it means is they can install that piezo with glue, make sure that's installed right, and then when they close the sandwich up, they get good contact. Right. Whereas if you had to like install the piezo directly on the PCB and then glue it, if you screw that up, you have to toss the entire assembly. Makes sense. Um, but also interesting is like they're reaching a certain DFM and supply chain maturity, right? That architecture is the same between the two. The battery supplier is the same. The decoration is now the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's like a different part, but they're using the same uh, techniques. Uh, the architecture, the overall architecture is the same. They're doing right. a welded sandwich around a metal frame. Yeah. Um, the well, the uh, frames are different materials. This one we were able to bend with our hands. That one is even though it's thinner, it's almost like almost impossible. Almost impossible. We're not 100% certain what this is. Might be a, a type of like non-hardened steel. That Bluetooth antenna. Look at the difference in the Bluetooth antenna. It's slightly See, different. This is a wider um, yeah. spacing. They claim this has twice the range. I wonder if that's also part of the um, increase in size. Is that if everything, if the battery and and the piezo is able to be farther away from the antenna, they're able to get larger range. Well, let's look at that really quickly then. So the battery's a little bit further away yeah. in the new design. Yeah. It's, it's barely it's still close. Yeah. Yeah. So that doesn't seem yeah. like that was. A I mean, so the the meandering geometry is more open here. Yeah. Uh, it's tighter over there. So maybe, yeah, they're able to get that. Do we want to uh, look at what module they're using for Bluetooth? Let's do it. But what's really interesting is that the antenna appears to lead into a smaller chip first before going into the Bluetooth module. And so our hypothesis is that this X8057F, in this case the X8000XK, XK. Yeah. Uh, is some form of signal booster. So I want to talk about something very small that's interesting to me, um, mostly because it's something that we've had a lot of struggles with and it's actually very rewarding when you get right, um, but it, it's, it's secretly incredibly difficult, and that's designing good spring contacts. On the previous generation, which had good contact, but I note did die on me, um, they're using these interesting leaf spring style Whoa. contacts for mm. the uh, piezo, and they're using these really lovely gold plated contacts for the battery. The cool thing about gold is that it doesn't <coughs> rust. And is very conductive. Yep. So in the new version, they've thrown out everything they've done in the previous one. Which is interesting because they've kept a lot of stuff, but their contacts, they decided they could do better. Yeah. So here, for the, um, for the piezo, they're using a coil spring. I like that. This little conical coil spring, which is so cute. Also gold plated. And then they've switched their leaf contact style uh, for the battery. And this is probably because this is a more appropriate design for replaceable. a uh, replaceable battery. Yeah. So Pepin, why is the new tile bigger than the old one? I'm really happy you asked that question because I wanted to draw something for you. So the old tile, what happens is you end up having just a simple battery. You have to layer it on top of a thin PCB. And then you've got battery contacts touching the side and the back, or sorry, on this side. And all they had to do here was make a cutout in the PCB from here to here. Once you've done that, you wrap the whole thing in a housing. Okay. And that gives you like the ability to have a very skinny housing because all you have is a stack up of three things. When we go to this design, a couple things happen. The first is we end up with a battery a, just like a generally a thicker architecture. So the battery has to sit in here. It has to sit on a taller contact because it's getting pushed into a different situation. 
that battery is also now supported with more stuff behind it. Uh -huh. So they're reinforcing this area because like the housing isn't going to be as rigid. Right. So that adds thickness. Mm -hmm. And then when your battery cover comes on, you also have something that's moving. So you need to add things like foam to take up the slack because you know, this is now like latched into other things and there's some gaps that happen. Right. So our thickness increases a little bit. But the big difference between the two isn't necessarily the thickness, it's the footprint. Exactly. And so the big drivers on the footprint, if you look at this battery, before we could come around the battery and just have a wall. Mm -hmm. And there's really nothing else that prevented us from doing that. If you wanted to reinforce it, you could put some amount of ribbing here, Right. but that's it. In the new version, you've got the battery sitting here and First of all, that foam gasket, that's gonna take up space. That needs a landing pad. Yeah. And then also because this has to slide on over this. Right, you need a whole additional wall on the other side. Exactly. Yeah. And you need all of this space for the latching grooves. And so they tried to take advantage of the corner here for one of the latches. Which is nice, you, yeah. You know, you have a circle inscribed inside a square. Mm -hmm. So that's smart. But still, like all of this other space required yeah. tons of extra material it's wasted. Um, and all this reinforcement to make sure that it could latch. Yeah. Um, okay, so this was an interesting product because of this removable battery. Um, you know, after four generations, they chose to go from a non removable to a removable. I think that in a lot of modern tech products, you see either the reverse happening or either, or maybe just no consideration of that. Yeah. Um, the rechargeable aspect is is what's most popular. A rechargeable battery is something they could have used or could have considered, but that would have increased the size and cost even more to include a, a, a USB charging port or something like that. And um, you know, for something that's supposed to last a year, self-discharge becomes a really big issue with LiPo batteries. Mm -hmm. So this lithium chemistry is more appropriate. You know, for the product designers out there, I think these are common struggles that we have. Uh, what feature is more important and less important. And the, the only way to really know is to um, learn over time from how people are using them and respond to that. Guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. Uh, remember to like and subscribe, leave comments down below, tell us what to tear down next. And uh, happy holidays. Yay, happy holidays. Bye guys.